Hello and welcome everybody to today's video. Welcome to the V Academy. My name is Crumbrion, Professor Crumbrion, if you would. And today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, wonderful, wonderful game that we played on Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. And uh, be happy to get your reactions to it. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. If you want to follow me and watch games in real time, check me out on twitch.tv slash Crumbrion. For now, let's go check out the game. Thanks for watching. Three, two, one, go! Yeah, I was thinking about that today. Like I wanted I wanted to kind of give a breakdown between the two archetypes of Gardevoir that I've been seeing and that I and, and just give my opinion on which one I think is actually better a better play right now. Now I I have been playing I well I've I've been playing Turbo Guardy or like aggro, like Gardevoir aggro, um, in person a couple of times. I unfortunately couldn't, I, I was missing a couple cards both times, so I can't give an accurate uh, feel on how the deck is performing. But it's one, of, it's one of those things, like anything else, if you don't get the cards you need, when you need them, it's going to be a really rough time. It's uh, it, it plays a lot of different kinds of Pokemon, which it cuts down on the ability to do what you want to do. Unfortunately, but when you get the cards that you need at the right time, it's a very, very good deck. You tried Guardi some, but you couldn't get a hand on it, even though Pult kind of plays like Guardi. Gardevoir and Dragapult have very similar ideas in the fact that you have to kind of have a good read on the board state and you have to you have to kind of understand what the right thing is to do at specific times for sure dragapult requires a lot of, th of of thinking ahead and gardevoir requires a lot of thinking ahead they have more basics in hand tarapa ghosts So, this is a double up on the Ralts. Um, I kind of want a secret box this turn, but I also kind of don't. Because, like, we can also just Ultra Ball next turn and get more cards with Curlia. So I think we just hold off. <laughs> Tarapa gross. You don't like all the new Ace spec cards? You're not sure what's going to be the best for baby feds? I don't mind the new Ace specs because it's nice in the sense that it's giving us a lot of options and what we can do. All right, so that Super Rod might come in handy. Um, the nest ball, not so much. I think what we want to do, I think we want to save the, I think we want to save that box. We could get a guard of war right now, but we have no use for it. So I think we just grab a curly we Iono. We're going to lose the scream tail. It's pretty much the way it's going to go, unfortunately. We can get rid of this. That's unfortunate. Put down another Ralts. And then we kiss our poor Screamtail goodbye. This being here sucks. Because it would have been nice to kill this this turn, but we couldn't. If we had gotten uh, if we had gotten a guard of war, we actually could have KO'd this. Unfortunately. They're trying to get a they're trying to get a area zero under depths. 
It was very, very clear. That's what is wanting, they are wanting to happen here. Goodbye, poor Screamtail. We hardly knew you. So we want to put up the... Yeah, because that's not doing enough. We want to put up the Ralts. We could attack with Mind Jack, but it's only going to do 140. It's just not enough. We'll do this. I probably should have done Gape Jawbog first. Um, now we know we don't need anything in the prizes necessarily here, so... But we'll get rid of Fluttermane for now. We get the Gardevoir, which is good. I'm going to put down the League Headquarters. I'm going to evolve to Gardevoir here. We'll put down the Heavy Ball now. Do we get Monkey Dory? We don't get Monkey Dory. That's fine. So we have one Gardevoir that's prized and one Energy that's prized and our Tauros is prized. So that kind of sucks too. So we're not going to waste the Dark Energy. We need more Energy in the discard pile to get our Drifling going here. Which we end up getting. That's very good. Um, so we're going to do this and retreat to Drifloon. Don't necessarily need Ultra Ball. Okay. Um... Unfortunately, we can't get that last one down, but it's fine, because we can actually just kill a Tropagos here in return. Just barely, but we can do it. We get the Iona, which is nice. We might want a Tulip next turn, though, because that will get us another kill on Terrapagos if they don't play another Bufalant. Which they do. That's fine. But we can get Screamtail and we can knock a Bufalant out here, or we can go after the Hoodoot, which I'm thinking I might just want to go after the Hoodoot. Thinking that might be the play. It's unfortunate. So 100, this so goes to 300, that drops down. So we're, we have to get an extra 20 on the Drifloon, which is doable next turn, because we could just take a Terrapagos out next turn. Because it's just going to be 5 energy with uh, Bravery Charm. To get there. Which we'll have in the discard pile next turn. You're going to go for what? My Gardevoir. Not a good idea. It's fine. Kind of a bad idea for them. Uh, especially now considering we have uh, everything we need here, so. So we're going to discard this. And an Arvin for Earthen Vessel. And uh, Marie Return, I guess. So they think that they've got us here because we didn't have any energy in the discard pile. Now we do. It's unfortunate that we're going to be getting our Gardevoir into dangerous territory here, but also not bad.
So... We're going to push this damage over to this Terrapagos. Because it's getting blocked by the Bufalant, so... Um, we have this to move damage around if we need to. Again, this is why Gardevoir has such strong matchups into this, so now we have full damage of what, what, whatever we want to do here. And uh, I think we should just put down a second Gardevoir, just to... We know that this one's going to get knocked out uh, by a Duskull, a Dusknoir. So... They won't easily be able to facilitate an attack here. We would have really liked to have a stadium to get rid of that, but... Yeah, so there's our Turos. If they don't kill the Gardevoir this turn, we at least have Turos, which is fine. Or whatever they decide to drag out into the active, we can just Turo. If they don't hand disrupt us here, which I'm assuming they're going to go for boss. So I'm assuming that's what's going to happen here. GG. And they didn't get the uh, energy to attack, so... There you go. Again, if we're playing, if we're playing a non-aggressive type of Gardevoir deck, there, um, I, I, I didn't really, I didn't really do anything to showcase it very good in this one. What I could have done differently, um, what I could have done differently is before I placed the Drifloon, I had Gape Jawbog, so I could have put Gape Jawbog down and then put the, dr and then put the Drifloon down to take the damage, and then I wouldn't have had to have as much energy on the Drifloon. Um, and then that would have made it so that I didn't have to get lucky and have the uh, have the Arvin to get the energy I needed for retreating my Gardevoir. They were hoping that they were going to strain my Gardevoir. And like the, the entire point of this is that um, one of Gardevoir's biggest weaknesses is if you don't have energy in the discard pile, you can't really do anything. So... By putting the Gardevoir into the active with no energy in the discard pile, it means I can't retreat this Gardevoir. Um, luckily, I had energy in hand, and so like I could just discard it, or I could have just attached it, but I wanted to attach the Dark Energy that turn anyways. So we attach the Dark Energy, we put the energy in the discard pile, we Arvin for two more energies. Um, right, so then we have enough energy to retreat the, Gar the Gardevoir. And then not only that, we push the 30 damage over to Terrapagos, uh, which, if they decide to take out Drifloon, um, we easily facilitate another attack, even having to put energy somewhere else. That preserves energy in the discard pile, or potentially retreating and whatever else that we else needed. They don't have an easy way to take enough prizes that turn, even with Briar. So we do go down to two prizes, but they have five, so they'd have to knock out... Um, they'd have to knock out... Gardevoir and a second Gardevoir in order to take enough prizes for victory there. Because <clears throat> basically, I would have been down to two prizes and then they had five, right? They could have, yeah, they, they could have done it, but they needed to, they needed to uh, use Dust Noir to KO my Gardevoir and then they would have need to have taken out a second uh a second two prizer, which I didn't have on the bench. I didn't put down Pheasantipity, so they only had and they only had an option to KO a second Guard of War. That was it, which they would not have been able to get to without using Dustmore. Uh, and if they use two Dustmores, and they lose, so pretty much a situation where it's a it's a uh, GG, like it's a checkmate. Now getting that second Guard of War down means that uh, even if they knock out my Drifloon or they, and they knock out my Gardevoir, they might take three prizes. They might take four prizes with Briar, but then we have a swing back. So we have a swing back with whatever we need at that point, because basically all we'd need to do is facilitate another attack on... Uh, well, I mean, to be honest, if they had the Blood Moon or Saluna um, in the active, it would have been harder for us to do because we'd need boss's orders to get around the Blood Moon. Um, 
One thing that we could have done, theoretically, is uh, brought back the Screamtail, because we did have a Bravery Charm. Screamtail would then attack for 240, because uh, we could get uh, 140 damage, or we can get 120 damage onto Screamtail, which would then turn into 240 damage. Then we could attack the Pheasantipity on the bench. That would be the easiest path to victory, because we had Tulip. Tulip allows us to go there. We get um, the six six energy on the Screamtail that we need, because we had six energy available to us. Screamtail gets us the victory. We had the Bravery Charm, so... Pretty much, even if they took four prizes that turn and put us in a really bad scenario, um, we end up still winning that with uh, Screamtail, so... There you go. Pretty difficult spot, um, and it's it really comes down to understanding what you need to do in certain situations, prize mapping and things like that, right? Because what uh, what really hurts us in this situation is we need to get rid of under depths, because that's where Terrapagos is its strongest. And as we saw, Terrapagos, even with two Bufalant, um, even even with two Bufalant and all that stuff, the, they didn't have access to their Noctowl, which really hurt them. But they did everything they needed to do. Like, they got the damage on the Gardevoir, they counter-catchered, they did 220 damage to our Gardevoir, they put us in a really tough position, and we just were able to get out of it. We were able to get out of that situation, so... Uh, it's one of those things. Gard Gardevoir, when you play it aggressively, most situations, right? Most situations, you would not be having um, a Gardevoir out as quickly as we did. Now, we had Gardevoir out on what? Turn three? I want to say. Yeah, turn three. We potentially could have had Gardevoir out on turn two. And if we did, so we we ended up evolving Curlia. We had a second Ralt. If we had gotten if we had gotten Gardevoir on the like say say that we had say that we had gone for secret box. Right? Um and we had made a secret box play. We so we refinement we got, you know, professor's research and whatever else. Um, but say that we, say that we ended up going for secret box, like we, we refinement the super rod and then whatever two cards, uh, whatever, like, so we had the, we had the energy to whatever, whatever cards that we had from the refinement off, off of that, whatever, we then secret box away and then we grab, you know, blah, blah, blah. We had two energy in the discard pile. Which, if we had Gape Jaw Bog, then we could have had an attack with the Screamtail. We could have had an attack to go after the um, the Hoot Hoot, which would guarantee them no Noctowl that next turn, which would have been very good. It would have been a very nice thing. The thing with Secret Box, too, is Secret Box can grab us that stadium to get rid of Area Zero Under Depths. So. Not having secret box so say this was unfair stamp what does unfair stamp do in a situation against uh against terrapagos what does unfair stamp do so we unfair stamp them down to two right and then we knock out a terrapagos well what happens on their next turn right says so this turn say that we had used unfair stamp instead of instead and uh you know we put out guard of war we got the attack off on on the terrapagos blah 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 um, great. They're down to two cards. Um, they only, they have one Terrapagos left. We successfully have brought them down. Well, then they just, you know, play Nest Ball and get Pheasantipity. They have five cards now. Or four cards. Because they, well, they, no, sorry, five cards, because they draw one for three. They play one and then draw three. So they're up to five. Then they get Pheasantipity, right? And then they potentially get Noctowl. And then that's another two cards. And then all of a sudden, all of our hand disruption is completely out the window. Whereas if I just if I decided to if I decided to grab a stadium and uh, and play a stadium, right? Which I did this turn anyways, but they didn't have they didn't have area zero under depths, but we gave ourselves the best chance to 
to do something here because Pokemon League headquarters makes them have to spend more energy to attack. They ended up getting everything they needed anyways. They had zero under depths. Next turn, we could have grabbed, because we ended up getting Arvin, we could have gotten Secret Box. And Secret Box could have bumped their stadium, and they had a nice full bench. They would have had to cut down their bench considerably. Lose a lot of uh, a lot of Pokemon they might not necessarily want to lose. And so that's a play that we could have done. And that is a play that you could facilitate. We didn't need to because we were we were pathing very, very cleanly in terms of what we wanted to do uh, against that particular thing. If we were in a situation where we weren't going to be able to take a second knockout on the other Terrapagos, um, because they had two Bufalant down, but that doesn't matter because we hit it for 300 minus 60s, 240 anyways, so we're getting past the Tropicals. We're getting past the beef wall. Um, so there you go. But yeah. Again, turn four, game over at that point. Like, it's, it's going to be a very uphill battle for them. They don't really have a good path to victory because they can't, they can't take out two Guard of War in one turn. Uh, the second Guard of War has no damage on it. Um, they have to use a Dusk Noir to KO our benched Guard of War and then find a way to get damage onto our fresh Guard of War to get to take a KO in order for Briar to do that. And in order to do that, they would have to facilitate a counter catcher because they couldn't use bosses. And it's a lot of stuff that they needed that they just couldn't get to. So there you go.